We, we got it. We got a grand finals here. We got we got a great matchup. We got some good heroes in New Earth. That's what matters in the end. What what is the past is the past. We got Team Excellent taking on Stay Green. This is a rematch of cycle number one here of uh, of Haunt Tour season number two. So of course here in cycle two now. Uh, I lied. I don't know why I just said that. <laughs> this is not a rematch. This is a rematch of the Winter Bracket Finals. How about that? It's a little better. Obviously, a lot of things on my mind. So, again, still trying to get past all that. Uh, anyways, it's a rematch of the Winter Bracket Finals here. Team Stay, uh, Stay Green versus Team Excellent. Stay Green, of course, won that series two games to nothing. They still have only lost one game overall through two cycles so far. And here they are in the Grand Finals once again. Versus Team Excellent. So Team Excellent, I mean, they, they, they looked good like a couple teams have. Team USA, Team SR, they've looked good against State Green. They're showing signs of life. But in the end, State Green just perseveres. They're just too damn good. And, and you know, having Swinomelons on as a co-caster more and more recently, it, it's it honestly is more and more evident as to why that may be the case. I mean, he's definitely brings up a lot of good points uh, as far as the gameplay goes, you know, from just having those support items as a team to when to push to the drafting stage itself. It definitely is some great insight uh, that I know I have, and I'm sure you guys have as well, taken from that. So, of course, Swinomelons, the captain over here of State Green, going to be playing in this one. And uh, doing the actual draft this time around. So, as far as how this game is progressing, I, I did have to reconnect one a little bit late right there. But uh, the the initial bands, I believe it was Engineer. Uh, let's look at that. Engineer Scouts, Parasite. No, Parasite was just banned. Engineer Scout Keeper, and oh uh, nope, Ophelia. That's who it was. Engineer Scout Keeper and Ophelia were the initial bands. You got the picks coming out here. Look at Knox, by the way, going damn pier. So. Uh, once again, as I said earlier, Knox is favorite hero here for Han Tour, and going the Dampier pick as far as uh, as far as as far as Team Excellent is concerned. So yeah, big shout out to you, the viewers, with that set as well. I know obviously today has been an up and down day. We did get a great series with that set of TMSR versus Team USA. That that was a lot of fun to watch and cast that best out of three series. But, uh, again, hopefully we, we have another great one here. You know, that's actually important to know. You know, I should probably fix the scoreboard with that said. Um, you know, I'll fix it for the end game. Uh, but uh, it is technically a one nothing lead for uh, for Team State Green. Actually, just remember that as uh, we are entering in here. So it is a one nothing lead for Team State Green as a result of coming from the winner's bracket. So this is actually a best out of five. It's not even a best out of three. It's technically a best out of five. But SG is up one game to nothing. So we'll have a minimum of two matches. Could be up to four matches if it goes the distance. So, hey, we, we still could have a lot of Heroes of New Earth <laughs> coming at you uh, with that said. So here we are um, in in Pyromancer. the second set of bands now. Or, excuse me, picks. Pyromancer going to be picked up here by Team Excellence. So going to be going the Pyromancer route. Seems like this is a very aggressive team in the making. And again, it's going to come down to just trying to really take it to State Green before they can get that push going. They have the Tempest and Warbeast excuse me, already with the Lodestone. And actually, that also makes for an interesting point. How uh, you We're probably going to see that Lodestone mid. Uh, Warbeast Suicide, Tempest in the Jungle. And then maybe even more of that short lane carry going to be coming out here from State Green, possibly. Actually, very curious to see what they... Uh, what they do go with here with that final pick. But Aluna is the fourth to last pick. Of course, going with their support option right there. So, Aluna being picked up. And now one more pick on either side before we move into the first game here. As far as the final pick for Team Excellent, again, they got support options. Suicide, Pharaoh. yeah, suicide option definitely left over. Pharaoh's going to be that choice, it looks like. <laughs> Uh, for them. So, what uh, speaking of back to him, he's, he made the mention. He actually is not a huge fan of the hero in general. Thinks he's just not good enough to compete. But a lot of teams disagree. I mean, uh, including Team Excellent here. It seems like a lot of teams disagree. He's picked up frequently. I think more so, if anything, against the Tempest. But also, I guess, a hero like Warbeast is obviously a very good tool against him. Now, Lodestone's decent against Pharaoh, simply because he can get away, obviously, with the rocket drill of his. But. Um, as far as this game, you know, I could definitely appreciate that last pick feral there coming up from Excellent. As far as their lanes are concerned, again, something like probably a Pebbles Pyromancer. You got Torture, Dampier, Bottom, maybe, and then Pharaoh. Going to be that long lane. So setting up like that, again, we'll see what State Green... Are they going to go that short lane carry here? Or is it going to be more of a... Uh, more of an aggressive style of carry to go with what could be 
early on push. I, I'm leaning towards something like a uh, like a Moon Queen even actually. Wouldn't be surprised to see here from uh, from Stig. And they're not usually known as that kind of team, I know, but oh, something just with the way they picked their lineup already. Seems like it could be possible. Sandwraith even. Although they don't have Empath. They go on the Predator route. Okay, so they do go the carry, the hard carry route in the end, but it is a Predator. As far as that was actually picked. Yeah, that was actually picked up. <laughs> See Team Excellent. Trying to go for the, the synergy of all being ready. But uh Almost Let's almost got on. it. <laughs> Yeah, I can I can agree with Brodex Valo there. Again, they they not only delayed in the first place, they don't have to go through what they had the last round, so Hey, both of these teams, they just wanna play, we just wanna cast. And that's exactly what we're doing here. So finally we got game number one coming at you this series. Again, it is a one nothing lead for State Green as a result of coming from the winner's bracket. So technically a uh, a best out of five right here. Start things off, you got Knox on Damp here. He is heading towards the top lane immediately going to be looking to uh, get up in the front lines, but of course, stay green. They are sending their reinforcements. You have War Beast, the only one not there, but uh, Predator going to lead the way up here. So the, yeah, they, they, they go the Predator pick in the end, and, and you do look at the Legion team. A lot of magic presence, uh, again, with that, mag that stone hide. This is a team that it makes a lot of sense against. Uh, it, it's a team that uh, you can get in there, activate the stone hide. He can be pretty aggressive. Now, sure, the mummy walls can be the one downside, but uh, I think that's it's still worth that pick by all means. Of course, Chessy, the uh, carry player nowadays for State Green, going to be playing the Predator here. We'll see what kind of start he has as well as far as his items are concerned. Again, expecting to have that safe farm in the lane top. Wonder if Z Freak's even going to support him or if he's going to go more for the middle lane matchup with him and Lodestone versus. What will probably be, again, Pyromancer and Pebbles. Ooh, the ultimate Pyromancer skin, by the way. This is actually, I don't know if I've, I think we may have seen it once before. The, uh, <laughs> Bobo Fett skin, as I like to call it. Mr. Bounty Hunter here. Being played by Fine. Uh, he's actually headed towards the bottom lane. I don't know, they don't have it. There's a war side on Torture. So maybe Torture's going to place and then go back mid, but... I'm not sure what, uh, what they're doing here. They do not have a uh, rev themselves, so you see the pole camp is blocked. And actually, okay, gonna go in there and place a ward of sight for the bottom ruin. So eventually, Torture is gonna make his way to babysitting bottom. Yeah, Pyromancer gonna end up back in the middle lane, but it is gonna start off to be an Aluna middle lane with uh, with Lodestone here. As far as this matchup is concerned, going up against Pebbles and Pyromancer. Pharaoh, of course, going one-on-one -on -one against Predator, but even in the 1v1 matchup, I'm sure Predator is going to be more than fine as far as uh, his farm is concerned. Obviously expect Nox to also have the great time here at the bottom side. Limp going to do his part, though. Great suicide player. He's, he's kind of stepped into that role nicely, too. His brother, obviously, uh, changing roles into this season, going from jungle to, to carry. Limp also changing roles, going from that mid ganker to suicide. And according to the stats, I mean, he's definitely the best suicide player. Again, according to the stats, his Katie's he's actually the highest kill to death, kill to assist to de kill plus assist to death ratio in all of Hunter so far. Something like 10.8. I mean, it's pretty ridiculous. Um, does a very good job of being involved with this team. And obviously, you know, a lot of that I'm sure comes down to this, the team in general, but still. He has stepped into that roll nicely. But here he's going to be boxed out by Torture quite a bit, obviously. Not much you can do about that. Going to just have to keep the pulls coming. Again, with the pole camp also blocked. No Rev War to counter that, or is there? Nope, no Rev War going to be coming. It's going to be the Blood Chalice finish here on Nox instead. Tempest. My nuts and Tempest. <laughs> I was love saying that name. Oh, Warbeast actually at the bottom lane. He's being dove on hard right here. Chain reaction has come out. He's gonna go for the counter kill and damp here. But Damper goes in the tree. He's gonna be fine. Torch holding his ground. Gets the Bloodlust kill. And Pew gonna be able to fall back before Nox is actually okay. I thought he was gonna take aggro, but no, he actually comes up to continue to farm. So big Bloodlust kill. Onto the suicide Warbeast. I mean, that was a hell of a dive. It didn't catch how it started initially, but all of a sudden Torture sitting on top of him with that level one impalement. And uh, obviously Damp here on those front lines as well, and sure enough, just got, got Warby's killed. He wasn't able to kite away. Obviously doesn't have the escape mechanism himself, so he gets caught even at the tower. Able to pick him off right there. 
How's this middle matchup going? Lodestone, Swinter Melons, a 7-2 compared to an 11-3 Pebbles. <clears throat> so, so far, Brodex 5 level. Legion team having a slightly better time here in the middle lane. But again, there's the jungle factor, as always. You get the Bloodlust kill against that jungle team. Put yourself in a, at least if anything, the even footing. <laughs> but... Tempest just having a good time in the jungle with that set, or attempting to do so. He's using a counter ward right here. For that ward site. Pebbles and Pyromancer are actually going to clear out the yellow stack there. I'm not sure as how the devil probably even triple stack, wouldn't be surprised. Obviously making good use of their time and already winning the middle lane, also getting some good farm out of that. You see 19 creep kills. Skewed maybe a little bit though because of that jungle. But still, the GPM may be a better route as well. 245 compared to 214 of Lodestone. Top lane again! Predator leaps on a Pharaoh! Applying the damage. He has that battle cry also on top of him, so obviously helping with that. Aluna going for the bottom room. Gonna be picked up by a torturer first though. And instead we'll have to fall back. But Predator clearly, Chessy, keeping the pressure up here. At this top lane. Although Bassett's deserving credit here. Suicide Pharaoh, he's actually 15 and 4. Using that rocket of his especially to snipe those kills. Is he leveling that up? Uh, yeah, it's level 2 actually. He has a level 2 Hellfire on top, I was going to say. Hellfire seems like it could be great against hero like. Uh, like Predator especially. In that matchup. Bottom lane, Warbeast. Learning from before, Limp realizing uh, he cannot really play too aggressive. <laughs> Dampier and Torture have a good amount of damage output. And they have a way to close on you pretty easily. Of course, Dampier with a flight on top of the Terrorize. So until you're level 6, you need to play fairly passive. No, uh, I don't believe Ancients have been done yet. With that said... See Dampier, 320 gold per minute here currently. Knocks at the bottom lane. There's the Ancients we're talking about. Gonna be done here. She kills off one of the dragons. Has a health potion to recover, but... Tempest is level 6. Oh, we do see the leap right here on to Feral. Tempest coming out. I don't think it's gonna be fast enough, though. Pharaoh even stop and eat a tree right there. That was a little risky because that almost put him in range of Tempest actually for the Glacial Blast, but he is able to get away in the end. So Bass is staying alive, was kind of scouting out in the jungle right there. And he's having a doing a sound job at that top side. Dampier is having the better time overall. Actual farm. Can't expect to see that light brand into the uh, into the Grimoire power. I'm sure. Nox especially, let alone just Dampier in general. Great, great item build up for him. And pick a Minor Totem on the ground right here. Pebbles full on items for the time being, so just gonna drop the Minor Totem here and maybe when he hands off to the bottle, hands off the bottle to Pyromancer or finishes that mana battery. Be able to get it back, but... Look what's over here. Torture actually finds Warbeast doing the Ancients. Not gonna get a kill though. Aluna comes in just in time. And now actually Pew's in trouble. He's going to try to get himself killed by the Ancients right here. Luna Partho cannot get it off in time. And he does get himself killed by the Ancients. So at least kind of making the best of that situation, I guess. But obviously would have liked to have that kill happen onto Warbeast in the uh, in the process. Not able to do so, though. So in the end, Torture falls. Going to make his way back to the bottom lane. No, but Nox again. He's doing just fine, even without him. Obviously, Warbeast has been away from that bottom lane for a little bit. Tempest has the Ring of Sorcery. He's level 11. Seems like a decent time to try to make something happen here in the near future, perhaps. For this Hellborn inside. Um, although, at the same time, you also have Warbeast. You want to lean back on it. And a Predator. Looking for more for farm. So maybe that's the reason why I shouldn't expect to see too much of that. If anything, the Legion side, Team Excellent, they're the ones that expect to be the aggressors. But, you know, same with that, though. Damp here. He usually wants to get that at least the Grimoire power before we start seeing him being really active, but most certainly with his abilities alone can be quite the threat. <coughs> 
Torture and Dampier once again pushing this bottom lane. Uh, you also see right there, Chessie deciding to go the Alchemist Bones route here. It's about eight minutes al uh, eight minute Alchemist Bones. And are going to be coming out middle in the meantime. Los on Rocket Trail, not in time. Fine collapses on him with Pebbles. Being played by Brodex, and they get the kill right there. Alchemist th Bones, though, being delivered to Predator, so going that route. So making more of a point that they are going to be about that farm, and, and you know, wonder about that, because... And especially if Team X, if they see that, which obviously I'm sure they will here right away, I want to try to take advantage of that. Farrell, the meantime, at the top lane, will they use a Tempest Ultimate? Probably. It's being blocked out. He's being chased down Hellfire. Wrath of the Farrell, and he stays alive. Tempest did not have the mana for it, so that explains it. He needed the 200 mana. He stunned in, put the Meteor down, and he was out of mana to Ultimate. So he probably would have right there, but in the end, Farrell gets away. Big, big escape by Bassett. And stay green, still without a kill, actually. As far as their hero kills are concerned, so. Well played. Well played by Bassets. You see Pyromancer also coming up here. You're going back to the creep clearing potential. Pyromancer, a great support option for that. On top of Torture for that matter. So the, yeah, they got two heroes that are actually pretty solid at that for them. That's good for them. Swindle Melons. Haystream bought it up. He actually said hi to Pyromancer right there, but maybe figuring there's more to it. Decides to fall back. Uh, but yeah, going back to the Alchemist Bones pickup here by, by Predator. I mean, it, it, obviously it tends to be more of the... Okay, you want to sit back and farm item. We're going to try to take advantage of that. We'll see if uh, we'll see if Team X is going to do so. Because <laughs> I guess Swinomel's kind of put it great, you know, when he was talking about the Alchemist Bones. Like he said, it, it's, it's a crap item basically right as you get it. But it turns out to be an amazing item. You know, into that mid game to even the late game stage, just that the amp in gold it gets ridiculous as it progresses on. So initially, it's 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 a hinder a little bit, and definitely takes a little bit of time to build up. But once it does, it uh, it will be dangerous, dangerous here for Team XM to deal with. And that's just the nature of the game in general. I mean, what they're going up against, what their lineup is. Seems like Team XM wants to make the plays earlier on. It seems like that's actually what they're trying to do right here. Farrell's coming in. He's level seven. He's got that snipe ready to go. Wants to get a Luna most likely. I mean, Lowson, of course, both with a haste drone and that rocket drill to get away. So not your prime target necessarily. Nox actually farming up some stacks here in the jungle in the meantime. Using that blood chalice of his. Great item for damp here. Light brand already finished. So again, Nox is farm. 445 gold per minute. Taking off as it does, man. And at this rate, he's going to have a pretty quick good Grim War, so... And I'm sure once he gets the Grim War, then, it, then you're, you're looking to make stuff happen. Pretty aggressive leg, but also, you know, props to the support, of course. Stacking the jungle for him quite a bit. Giving him more opportunity for that better farm there. Yoda the 5 finished on Bassett, so gonna be going for Plated Greaves actually as far as his boots choice here. Whoop, middle lane. Ultimate use on a shutter or on the low stun it looks like. We got the blazing strike coming out. Pebbles also with the combo. So just simply put everything together. <laughs> Should have been watching the middle lane where obviously the action was gonna take place. 3-0 hero kill lead. Again, still no hero kills for Stay Green. Not that this is a team that screams hero kills by any means, but. Worth pointing out, 11, nearly 12 minutes into the game now. Again, the Plated Greaves pick up though, great against War Beast and Predator, definitely. See how physical threat is more of a concern here against the Cellborn team, so Mystic Vestment's not as much of a priority. Hellborn sign, absolutely, and especially for how much Swindle stresses Mystic Vestments. <laughs> You know, I must say, we, we better see four or five Mystic Vestments over here on the Hellborn side as, a, as we pick up into the mid-game, because, you know, he, 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 he quotes that a lot, that uh, it's a very important item to have in most cases, and this is no doubt a team you want Mystic Vestments again. So I'm, I'm actually going to be keeping a close eye on that to see if that happens or not. One second... Just taking care of something real quickly, guys. Sorry about this. 
Okay, and we're back. Alright, bottom lane looks like there is initiation. Torturer gonna be jumped on. Shatterstorm explosion going off and he will fall. Nox right there. Obviously already retreating by that time, so a little bit of a push coming out. You see the response here by the Hellborn, uh, Hellborn team and State Green does pick up their first kill of the game. Predator though, porting to that bottom lane to assist with that, and now you see him walking all the way back to the jungle here. To so continue to progress with his farm. I mean, God, the look at Nox. Uh, now 508 gold per minute. Middle lane, they're collapsing. Pebble's in trouble right here. He is going to be left on by Predator. They chucks him off from him right away. Pyromancer's nearby. Has a dragon fire. So it doesn't hit, though. The Stone Hide came out. He didn't stun anyone else. The Lagmites will stun Tempest. Tempest survives for now. And he will stay alive in the end. But here comes Dampier. Dampier against Predator. Not going to look to fight that. Now, they did get the tower kill, so that was actually pretty big. Pharaoh comes in out of nowhere. Wrath of the Pharaoh takes out Tempest, and he's going to board away. Dampier is still hanging around, just in case Predator was looking for more. So, I think Team Excellent, pretty happy. Pretty happy with what they got of that, actually. And did we just see a portal key purchased by Pebbles? I think we did, actually. That's a very, very efficient portal key pick up there, especially with him dying there. So, even more of a reason why it's... Uh, Victory there for Exxon, the tower kill and everything else. Look at those triple stack ancients. Team Excellent, man. I, I'll tell you, I, as the more and more you watch these guys as the season progresses here, I mean, for, for me, and I'm sure it's the same for you guys, they, they definitely continue to impress. And Nox is farmed now. Four, 540 gold. Look at that. Grimmore, a power just finished. You have Predator. He actually picks up a mighty blade here. Very interesting. Very interesting. Lowe's in the meantime at the top lane needs to be careful. Portal key in from Pebbles right there. He just got it. And it catches Swindle Melons off guard completely. He was not ready for a portal key initiation, clearly. And he gets jumped and taken out. Did I say a level 11 Tempest? <laughs> well, he is level 11 now, six minutes later, with the delay catching up. <laughs> it's about to get about delays. He looked at the chat sometimes, and you see a. Uh, he said something really derp six minutes ago. Anyways, um, but yeah, the Portal Key pickup immediately impactful. Team X has some good momentum going right now, but it, it comes down to can they keep it up? Look back at the Predator pickup though, the Mighty Blade pickup. Interesting. I mean, usually you would see the Insanitarius or the Elder Parasite follow up here, if not even both of them. But Jesse. I, I, I assume that's going to be a, an early shrunken. And, and again, it does go back to this Legion team. I mean, you look at the team. He has the mixed investments even already. So that's good for him there. But uh, this is a very magic damage heavy team. Dampier is a hard magic damage carry. Yeah, I know I'm stating the obvious here, but <laughs> I guess worth pointing out. It makes sense as to why he's going this build. Now, um... Obviously, it's not going to help enhance this farm that much more, but it will keep him alive. And obvious fights that are going to continue to happen. Speed in that middle lane. Nice stun right there from Alita. That was really awkward. Dampier actually jumped in, and he got stunned immediately as he flighted in. So he wasn't even able to terrorize right there. If he got the terrorize off, I don't know if that rocket drill would have happened. But meanwhile, at the top lane now, Pharaoh jumps in on the Tempest. Buying some time. Pyromancer comes out. Blazing Strike comes out. Phoenix wave to follow. And my nuts on Tempest does fall right there. Big kill at the top lane coming out. Team excellent, despite missing on the middle. They get one at the top. Again, this is just a very mobile team here, clearly. And they are taking every advantage of it. So they are playing very well so far. Here in game number one. And there's a portal key. I mean, he just got the Grimoire. <laughs> he just got the Grimoire, it felt like. And now he has a portal key on top of that. Holy crap. Holy crap. Nox just doing the Nox thing once again. On Dampier, especially. Mystic Vestments is picked up on Spinamon, so there you go. That's just that. Um, Tempest actually a Neophyte's book picked up here. I wonder if that's going to be just an early tablet coming out. So, no Astral Aid. That's actually really interesting. I'd be curious to get the thought of, uh... Thought of Swinomelons, with that said. And actually, you know what? I might have a Co-Caster. Let me see... If I can actually get that hooked up real quickly. Always better to co-cast in the end. Pick him up. No action going on right now, so don't worry, you're not missing out on much. Oh, as I say that, Pebbles jumps uh, a little in the middle lane, so probably wouldn't have caught it anyways by using the portal key to actually jump a leader right there and obviously take her out. Top lane, Pharaoh's in trouble. 
We got three coming in. Leave there for Predator. This might be a dangerous move. The Wrath of the Pharaoh coming out. Mummy Wall goes up. Ports are coming in. Predator in a horrible spot. Nice low zone though. Initiation. Down goes Feral. But here comes Dampier. Dampier is hungry. He takes out Tempest. He falls shortly after the Predator too much. The stun from Pebbles though. They are going to calm it on Pebbles. And now low zone in the back. He has Rocket Shield one second. Can he get away? He gets hit by there. Nice stun on the Pebbles. Positioning himself to do so. Pebbles thinking about still chasing though. Two more seconds on the portal key. Well, they maybe try to find him here. Warbeast comes in. He gets trapped immediately, though. Metamorphosis is up, but he's trapped there. Will we see a Porter King? No, it's stalled right now. Torture goes down. Another port coming in. Buyback from Chesse. Gonna lay fun at Pebbles right here. Pebbles will fall, and now Pharaoh has to get away. So stay green. Make some big plays right there. They did buy back, though, on Predator. Uh, Bass is still buying back, as we see here, and he is uh, still trying to get away, and I think he is going to be fine in the end. You know, low stun at Swinemouth had a big stun right there. Definitely say that had a big, big stun coming out. Uh, to start that off on low stun, it kind of stalled the, the supports from helping as quickly as they wanted to. As actually low stun, though, still might be in some trouble. Parmets are with auto attacks. Oh, ho, ho, ho. he gets the stun up auto attacks. No, it's not enough. It's not enough. Oh, man. He, I don't think he had mana for his ultimate. So, I, I, yeah, if he, if he had his own, probably would just open with that. How about that presence of mind, though, from low? I don't know if that was just having to be perfect timing or what, but somehow manages to get away and stays alive there. That was a big, big escape coming out by uh, by Swinomelons. Access to join. Mighty Blade picked up on Pebbles. So shrunken head in the works for him. How's that predator? Okay, no, he's just sitting on the mighty blade for now. He actually went the elder parasite to follow it up. So one of the mighty blade to bulk himself up a little bit more. Well, probably I, I well, act, if he's not going to be going for it first, then it, I could definitely see it turning into an ice brand. That wouldn't be out of the question by any means. In fact, uh, if he decides to maybe go for that next, into even something like an eventual Dombringer, <laughs> could see happening. We'll see what route Chessy decides to go here. I'm gonna go ahead and get my co-caster a call now. Probably saw him joining. Pebbles jumps! And down goes Luna right there. It's another free kill coming out. Predator continuing to jungle here, but he's gonna be fine. That's Pharaoh and Predator just gonna run right on by him, so. Making their way to the top lane though. Torture's already up here. Hello. Wait a second, you might be muted. Yes, you're muted. There we go. Hello! Sania! Are you there? You're not there. You're not there. I don't hear you. The Legion takes down a Hellboy. Well, let tower. me know when we get that fixed. Holy crap! In the middle end of the meantime, we do see a kill happening onto uh, Dampier. Actually, Pebbles trying to stay alive. Now he throws a stun out. Pharaoh puts the Mummy Walls up. Down goes Pebbles. And now Pharaoh, he's going to be counted on as well. Bassett's dropping quickly. Probably going to fall. Yes, he will. Bassett goes down. A three for nothing exchange. <laughs> I gotta stop being distracted, man. I think I kinda have to catch it on camera though. But anyways, they catch Dampier out. He gets killed off the bat, and the follow-up is beautiful. And now this is gonna be a tower kill on top of the tower kill. Bottom. Stay green picks up a lot right there. As far as uh, as far as what just happened. So big plays coming out from them across the board. And and you go back to the start here for Team Excellent. I mean they had a beautiful start. Knox was doing phenomenal with his farm. They, they were seeming like they were going to play aggressive, and they, they, most, they have kind of continued that, but Stay Green has done a great job of responding, man. And now this is going to be a Kongor kill as well, so this is going to be big. Uh, Insania, are you there now? I think you should be able to hear me. Okay, yes, there we go. Okay. I can hear you now. Perfect. Alright, so, well, you came Kongor into a uh, pretty prime spot right there. <laughs> yeah, I noticed the team fight oh, uh, in the middle lane. I basically missed six minutes. I was watching the stream, so... Okay. Um, there's a six minute gap that I've missed entirely, but Whoa. it looks the same green are doing better than they did before. Yeah, it it's basically comes down to, I mean, Team Excellent, Nox had a beautiful start, he had the early portal key Grimoire. Um, they went to fight at the top lane, and actually Swinomel Mounds and Lowstone did a pretty good job of getting a stun in. Uh, buyback on Predator early on after he died at the top fight, it ended up being a big fight, they came back, and uh, since then, Stay Green has actually been looking pretty good, including that middle fight, as we saw right there, so. At this point, Stay Green, I think it's safe to say, is actually in a pretty good spot here now, as this game I mean, picks up. Definitely, like just looking at the items, they've pretty much got everything they need. Uh, Kyle always likes to talk about teamfight items, and they're getting a lot of them. 
Uh, it looks like Minus is actually going for Talbot as well, which I think is really good against Pharaoh. Yeah. And he finishes up there, and Astrolabe. So this is really good for their team. This is something you will always see Stay Green do, where they go for team items rather than items that will just boost their own heroes. And it's especially good against magic damage teams, like the one that they're going up against right now. Mm -hmm. So you look at the Legion lineup here. I know you're kind of still trying to get your, your bearings straight. You missed some, maybe six minutes right or whatever, but you're 23 minutes in. You look at the stats and everything. I mean, Team Excellent, clearly they're behind now just because of their makeup. What what can you think they can do at this point to still be in this game here? I mean, they, the strength of their lineup really is the fact that they have really good heroes to pick off a Hellborn hero and then just go for a push. Yeah. Like, if they have both a Pharaoh and a Farm Pebbles and a Dampier, all those three heroes are really good at ganking, and they can always like farm aggressively, they can stay on the opposing side, just try and find a pickup and move from that would be probably the only thing they can do. Because in a 5 versus 5 straight up team fight right now, Stay Green is way too strong, especially with the item pickups that they have went for. Yeah. So they need to be looking for pickoffs. Stack Ancients is always important when you're trying to recover. So those are probably the two main things that they need to do right now. Okay. Yeah, they've been doing a pretty good job of stacking in general from the Ancients to the jungle for most of this game. I mean, Nox has definitely taken advantage of that, but... So it sounds like they just need to keep that up, basically. So, but you look at the GPM chart; it still is Nox ahead on that damp here. But obviously, Predator very, very worrisome. He does have the Insanitarius. Um, that's kind of interesting. He actually was sitting on a mighty blade for that whole time. But he, I, I, I think he either sold it. He probably ended up selling it. Sold it in the end, and he just buys now an Insanitarius. Um, I'm not, I'm not an idiot, right? Sanitarius does not require a Mighty Blade, yeah. No, so. no, it does not. No, uh, I mean, this is the standard Predator build. I'm not really sure about that Mighty Blade. Because I know Nox was sitting on one, maybe you're... Or like no, no, Pre has Predator had one, but so I thought it was okay. even going to be a shortcut. Right. He, he got it before he even got the Elder Parasite. It was right after the Alchemist Bones, but... Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah no, that's weird. Um, probably, like, later on a Brutalizer, if he's put it in a stash right now, temporarily, while he has a token. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, in Sanitarius, Elder Parasite is a standard build, and it was basically with a buff on the Elder Parasite, the Predator kind of became viable. Yeah. We started seeing him a lot more. Yeah. Yeah, he is, uh, and he is looking really good this game once again. Level 16 now is Predator. Uh, 1900 gold saved up, so, you know, maybe something like that Demonic Breastplate. Oh yeah, definitely. I don't think forward. there's any doubt about it. They don't have another hero that would go Breastplate, and it's Stay Green. Of course, they're going to go for the team supportive item. Yeah. So well, they do have War Beast, actually, right. now that I think about it, but... He looks like he's going for his BKB still, yeah. though, so he's not really going to get there in a while. Probably just want to get it as soon as possible onto the Pred. Otherwise, Brutalizer is always a great choice, and it's really good against an anti-carry. And when you're running a strategy similar to the one Excellent is, where you really have one hero that's doing a majority of your team's damage, items like Brutalizer and Savage Mace become even more valuable, because you want to lock down that one guy and not allow him to do damage. Yeah. And looking at Stagrin's lineup, I mean, they don't have... Like, they have the Tempest Ultimate, of course, and Swindle Mel and Stun, but except for that, they don't really have a lot of long-duration CCs. So fertilizers on both War Beast and Predator should be expected. Yeah, very true, very true. So we'll see if that uh, if that comes along. But for now, you know, stay green. Uh, doing uh, what they do best, grouping up right here, and uh, when when they really should. And it's going to be difficult for the Legion team to stop. Obviously, this is going to be a lost tower up here. There's no question in that. But um, it gets to a point. Do you defend the secondary tower? Is now the question. As Predator, or excuse me, Pebbles and Feral, they're counter pushing the middle lane. Do they need to get back though, or? Are they fine? No, just no, no. It? This is this is definitely the right decision. They know that they can't win that five versus five team fight, and they're just gonna leave every tower that they have to, and just try and trade like they're doing right now. As soon as they see Stay Green grab they're up, they're just gonna go push the other lane. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. It's <laughs> hard. Yeah. That was a little bit of a sloppy play. You don't want to you don't want to die when you do this. Now SG's gonna go for the base, which is a good decision. This is gonna force Legion heroes the to come Legion back. Yeah. Down. Yeah. Legion takes down. Legion takes down. Legion takes down. Legion takes Oh, well, I mean, a couple tower kills, definitely good for them, but yeah, they, they need to get back absolutely. This base is already turning to fall. It's going to be a tower no kill, it looks pebble. like. No TP uh, on Pebble. Oh, wow. Huge. Yeah, that is. He's running back, and so the Hellborn team, they're still sitting here, and if the you're the Legion Hellborn side, you are not looking to initiate without him. Predator putting in some auto attacks, but falls back. Now, he is going to have a decent flank position here if they maybe want to go for that. Predator leaps in right there. Tablet of Command, though, on a fine. He is gonna, going to be fine. As, uh, obviously, he did use a buyback there as well, so they will... They will hold them off in the end. They lose the tower, the Rax gets to Half-Life, but they do hold them off for now. Stay yeah, Green, though. One minute left on the token, so they're definitely going to go for this push again. Yeah. This is exactly what Stay Green wanted. They got a free tower, basically. They were very happy to trade those two for the three towers they got on the top lane, and now they're probably going to be able to get the Rax, because without a tower there, it's so easy to just run up the high ground, which I think they're going to do right now. Yeah, they're going for it. Just hit down that Rax. Yeah. 
Dampier jumps in. Predator again with a token. Look at that carnivorous healing for so much. The Elder Paris on top of that. Man, the Rex goes down. Lowstone jumps in. Shadowstorm. He's going to be counted though as soon as he gets exposed right there. And he will be bursted, but they get the melee racks. I'm sure Stagri not too worried about losing that, but would they maybe they should be Tampir leaves and never mind! Predator counters! Tampir is gonna end up falling. Tempest ultimate locking on pebbles as well. Product's gonna go down. Four players still alive right here for the Hellborn side. Dampier buys back immediately, and Stay Green definitely gonna fall back after that. They they got more than what they, they bargained for even. Yeah, that, that was a great push. trade for them. Uh, even though Swindle kind of overextended there and went in when it wasn't necessary for him to do so. They managed to get Dampier, they forced the buyback, and I mean, you can tell how experienced they green are in that kind of a situation. As soon as Dampier bought back, Minus pops his TP, yeah. you get out of there, and then they just all back off together. He eventually did cancel it, but it's just, they're so aware of everything that happens in the game. And they don't stay there a second too long and just get picked off. They back off right on time, and it, it just ends up great for them. Four yeah. heroes. Nothing. Yeah, one of uh, one of many reasons as to why they are so dominant here in in Hauntier once again now in season two so far. So, um, and again here in the grand finals, team excellence. It's one one of several teams that has most certainly been able to give them a challenge. But here we are in game number one. They, again, they looked good. They had a lineup that was definitely getting some aggressive play going early on. But one or two fights, it, it seems like every single time against State Green, you you, you mess up once in that in a, in a big fight going into the transitioning into the next stage of the game. And they just completely capitalized on you. Demonic Breastplate already finished on Chess. He basically just right clicked it as he went back to base. Jeez, level 1 Shield Breaker, even a Warby. So, not even going the Brutalizer out here, at least yet, but. Yeah. No, I mean, they, they do so much damage. Like, if you're already killing the hero without him getting anything out, then that's fine. Yeah. Dampier is one of those heroes that you need to either kill him or he's going to heal back up to full life. But something you said about Stay Green that I find so true is. They always dedicate so many resources to that first early game team fight, and they're not afraid to use buybacks to play the, to get into it. We've been scrimming a lot against them, and it's something that we've definitely noted that they will always use early game buybacks to make sure they win that one fight and get snowballing from there. Yeah. And, and you'd even noted out that Chessie did buy back early game in this team fight as well. So very, very typical stay green. This is mm -hmm. something they will always do if they have to. Just to make sure that they have numbers advantage in every fight. Now, now what is your take on this? Bass is actually just picking up his puzzle box level three even. It seems like we've been seeing puzzle box pop up a little bit more, even today a couple times. What's your take on that? I mean it's it's a great item against strength heroes in general, because strength heroes' biggest weakness is that they have small mana pools. And when you look at Predator, it's a hero that he's not very mobile if he's not able to use that venomous leap and yeah. stone to really be effective. If you're burning his mana, you're really making the hero useless. And Pharaoh's one of those heroes that will he will trap in the Predator. He'll pop the puzzle box, so just get rid of all of his mana right away. Even if it will cost him his life, he's basically traded Predator's effectiveness for himself. So I think it's a great item against Strength Heroes in general, but even better against Predator. Yeah. So it is level 3 once again. He basically prioritized that after the Plated Greaves. Uh, so that is good that they have that. You saw right there also that the, the jump happened. In another case, to stay green. Instead of panicking, maybe feel like they had to fight right there, they get away and... Uh, they ultimately fall back. Warbeast was not there. He was farming the bottom lane. Wasn't going to be able to join them immediately. So decided they did not have the numbers advantage. Fine trying to be a bait tool right here as he picks out the middle wave. You see the mini-map. Both teams in the vicinity. The low so says, I'm tired of it. He jumps in right here. The jump over Pebbles in the background. They're going to go for a burst on the Predator. Holy crap, they get it. He cannot buy back. Will it matter? Tempest Ultimate comes out. The low on top of it. And Warby's nom nom noming all over the place. Down goes Dampier right there. We do see him now chasing Pebbles. But Warby's in trouble. He's being locked out low alive. He's going to be bursting out with the Dragonfire. Blazing strikes on a Tempest. Tempest also goes down. So three players dead. Dampier is dead for the Legion team. But they get the three themselves. And Pebbles is still chasing Lowstone. In the meantime, Luna's in trouble. Looks like Aluna's going to be finished off. It's going to be a near genocide here. As I think Lowson also went ML. He's going for the Juke. Okay, he's going to portal key right there. As Pebble still has follow up. No, not going to go for it. But how about that? A four for one exchange. Big burst on a Predator. Yeah, I mean, Swindle really talked about it a lot in the past series. But when it comes to the later stages of the game, initiation is basically what decides who wins. And the in that Legion fight, they just had the perfect tower. initiation onto Predator. Minus was an fast enough with the Legion they can cancel that initiation, initiation interrupting it yeah. to really allow them to just let Predator hit back, get his life back, and be able to be effective. Well, they're fighting here. We see another buyback on a Predator. Wrath of the Pharaoh going to be his right there. He's trying to buy some distance. Not going to happen, though. So Pharaoh will go down. But yeah, how about that buyback from Predator using his second and final buyback? So a little bit risky, but at the same time, they do get a kill out of it. And look at the top lane in the meantime, too. Holy crap. Base is yeah. being beat on. They do defend the rocks. I mean, that's what's important right now. They, they're yep. 
basically winning the game the longer it goes with these kinds of team fights. But they get dragged out and the Creeper is just able to push in, do damage to the excellent base, so... Um, I mean, it's a good buyback. He's gonna get a token in return, so he's basically at the same spot he was before. Yeah, he's fine. I guess he is yeah. fine, but it's just more of a case that I, you know, hey, if, if they if they get that burst damage again in a big five, he just happens to, for whatever reason, be out of position, Kogor they get a big down. burst on him, that could set up a free set of racks here for the Legion oh, yeah, team, definitely. but it, it a lot of things need to come together, obviously, for, for that to take place, including Chessie being in the bad spot in the first place, which you can't necessarily bank on, so... Um, 3,000 more gold on Swinomels. How about this? Nox with 4,500 gold. What, what are you thinking for Nox here as far as his next item build? I mean, there are a lot of things he could go for, but I mean, he has a Grimmer, he has a BKB, he has a Blink. Like, at this point, you've really gotten the core items that a yeah. Dampier wants. And it's basically, depending on the game situation, what he wants to go for. We see his team's going for Demonic. Um, he could definitely use some armor otherwise against Predator. You don't really want to bulk up on HP, because that just boosts Predator's damage. Generally, you want to get armor. Um, I'm not really quite sure. Dampier is not one of the heroes that we like to run ourselves, and hmm. I don't really personally think he's too great. I mean, sure, a lot of teams like have him as a comfort hero, and they run him really, really well. But yeah, I've just, I'm not really quite sure actually. I kind of wonder if, well, yeah, you got the souls on pebbles. The geometer's bane tends to be, you know, that that would help with the armor, and obviously the split presence could always be useful. It's nothing that screams over on the other one side that oh, I need it for that reason necessarily. But maybe shadowstorm, but. Yeah, I we'll mean, we'll I, does it actually approach Shadowstorm? I don't think. Uh, think. you know what? Maybe it doesn't actually. I don't think if it what if it would do that, then yeah, that, it's definitely a great pickup against the Shadowstorm. Shadowstorm basically makes you do take through damage. Oh, yeah. initiation. The middle lane. Yeah, what's going on over here? Pharaoh jumps in, but at what cost? Right here, he's gonna be turned on pebbles. Or wow, Pyromancer with the the burst, but again, just not enough. Down goes Pharaoh. You see, Lowstone able to tank all that damage. Torture nearby still, but. <laughs> He's not going to have any of that, so I'm not even sure how that started. I don't know if that was a hook from Feral that started all that or not, but... Um. I actually caught it. It was Swindamelon's um, catching Pyromancer okay. and Pebbles out. And then he caught both Pyromancer and Feral in his stun. Pebbles just blinked away. And Feral just tried to do the best he could in that situation, whilst yep. Pyromancer and Pebbles just backed up. Gotcha, gotcha. Level 3 Shield Breaker just finished by Warbeast, or level 2 I should say. Assumed he was level 3, but he gets that delivered here. And Predator in the meantime, though, he has a shrunken head by the way. Again, there's two things about that. One, he already has a stone high, but still great, but also it is an tower. active modifier, so he cannot use it at the same time as other Parasite, but, uh, I mean, I guess better safe than sorry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we talk, this is, this is a, I think it's a really smart pickup from Chester because he's basically only going up against magic damage. Yeah. And if you're actually going for sheep stick, even, wow. Um, that's actually a really good pickup. Always when you're going against parries, like no matter what, she think it's all. Oh my god! Oh my god! Warbeast is actually going to live. Holy crap! Here comes the turn. Pebble's gonna be bursted down. Dampier jumps in, but realizes that was a mistake. Here comes a nice wrath of the Pharaoh. Actually canceling Tempest immediately. That might save Dampier in the end. It looks like it will, but this is already a, a falling apart train here for Team Excellent. Down goes Torture. Pharaoh's in, in trouble. Hellfire is doing work. Sheepstick comes out. Dampier jumps back in, gets some big life still with the consume. But Predator is still alive. He has that token. He lives out in the Pyromancer. And Pyromancer goes down. Chessie ends up with the hat trick again. It's he still has a massacre. token as well. So he's not even really too concerned about it all. Yeah, that was. Oh, well, there you go. They jump back in. They do pick him up. And at what cost? Once again, Dampier going to get counted on. Dampier falls. He does not have a buyback. He just bought right there. So he's not buying back. Pyromancer goes down again. What? Are we going to see Annihilation? Yeah. Are we? Are we? Are we? Are we? Oh my god. He's trapped. He's trapped by the puzzle box. He couldn't get it. No annihilation. Anyways. That's a genocide, folks. Stay yeah, green on the first three. He wanted to get the annihilation. Every just backed off, started to play the round. Legion barracks gets but... destroyed. <laughs> nope. A tough loss. Uh, Legion barracks gets destroyed. No, I mean, I think the, the last last fight was re uh, the Tempest Ultimate. Even though like they didn't really last too long, it was really just. He locked them down for those two seconds that Predator needed them to be locked down. Yeah. For him to be able to get his stuff off and just do his thing. And then Pharaoh jumps in and dies for it, basically, uh, for canceling that Tempest ult. So I think it was a really good trade off there for Minus, where he uses his ulti, but he forces Pharaoh to kill himself um, to make sure that he saves the other teammates. So, yeah. A good, good play there from Stay Green overall in the end of the game. I missed those six minutes where they kind of turned the game around, <laughs> but. As you said, it, it sounded like a normal stay green thing where they yeah. make sure that they win those early team fights with if even if they have to use buybacks. Yep. Yeah. Nonetheless a good game. That's what Predator did, use the early buyback and it definitely helped.